Hello everyone, welcome to this new video. So today we're going to discuss the Azure Application Gateway Ingress Controller. It's just a fancy name for putting a firewall or a gateway in front of your uh, Kubernetes services. So to understand how the Application Gateway Ingress Controller works, let's first take uh, a look at the base case of how people typically do ingress on, uh, on Kubernetes. Um, so typically the pods uh, live on the Kubernetes cluster, of course, and uh, we expose them via service and that's fine and you can expose the service directly onto the internet but of course it's not advisable because you probably want to provide some sort of um, domain name to the service you probably want to um, provide maybe multiple services are going to share the domain name via pathing and you know routing rules and stuff like that so you introduce an additional you know layer above the service which is called the ingress layer and that is done via an ingress controller that you deploy on Kubernetes. And the ingress controller is going to be responsible uh, for receiving the traffic from the client and then deciding where this traffic is going to go. So, for example, you might have, um, you know, TLS termination. For example, you want to publish the website on HTTPS rather than HTTP. Um, ingress is going to be responsible for that. You want um, to route the traffic. If the traffic comes, you know, slash path one, then you go to service one, slash path two, you go to service two, and so on. So all these routing rules and, and fancy stuff, the ingress controller is going to be responsible for it. So what is the problem with this, with this configuration? It, it's not much really, but um, there are a few problems with this configuration. The first problem is that you're going to terminate the TLS on the ingress level right here. So um, the client speaks to the ingress using encrypted traffic and that's fine but who is responsible for the encryption and decryption for the traffic back and forth it's going to be this ingress controller and that lives within the boundaries of the cluster so um, if you get a lot of traffic uh, there is going to be a significant amount of compute just wasted on TLS just wasted on the you know encryption and decryption of this traffic going back and forth between you and the client um, so some people would like to offload this capability to terminate the ssl and tls actually a little bit earlier outside of the cluster and then um, you know move the traffic inward like that so that's one uh, drawback of using uh, this sort of setup another problem with that setup is that the ingress controller is not a firewall it's just simply a, a small reverse proxy tool that does basic routing and basic tls termination and that's all but it's not a firewall so if you want to put some kind of web application firewall in front of your service in order to protect it from you know malicious client there is nowhere here to put the waf the web application firewall except again uh, outside the boundaries of the cluster uh, which just adds an additional hop you're going to have to configure your WAF outside the boundaries of the cluster outside the boundaries of the infrastructure as code you know the yaml that you build for this and so on so it, it could be a big mess to handle what um, azure offers is what we call an application gateway ingress controller and that means instead of deploying a typical ingress controller like nginx for example or any of the other good ingress controllers out there there are a few brilliant ones um, but um, i actually don't know whether any of them have the proper capability to do web application firewall and even if they could they would be doing it on the inside the boundaries of the cluster so again that would just subtract from the you know available compute for the actual pods itself because you want to run these pods with the best performance possible so you probably don't want to do any of the WAF operations on the cluster itself as well. You probably want to offload that to another service that lives outside the boundaries of the cluster. So this is exactly what the application gateway ingress controller provides. It um, provides you with an app gateway that provides you with a you know URL routing, cookie-based affinity, TLS termination. You could also choose to do end-to-end -end TLS if it's a requirement for you due to some kind of um, compliance issue or something like that and uh, it supports integrated web application firewall um, inside it so that you can actually filter the traffic that is coming to your pods uh, and make sure that you know no sql injection uh, happens no malicious you know request happens or something like that and the way it works is just you you configure the application gateway here and uh, the configuration of the application gateway is done via the yaml file so you write at 
a normal YAML file, a normal ingress YAML file inside Kubernetes. And once you deploy it on the Kubernetes cluster, it's going to automatically configure the app gateway for you to publish those pods properly. Um, and the way we can see that is to actually go here. Um, this is, for example, a basic ingress file. So this um, just, you know, uh, targets an Nginx ingress controller. And then we slightly modify it uh, to make it work with application gateway. And we just add, you know, application gateway, ingress, Kubernetes, IO, SSL redirect. So this performs SSL redirection. And the class of the ingress is Azure slash application gateway. That, that way it knows I actually need to publish this service um, using application gateway. Um, so let's quickly get into it. It's not a, a difficult operation to do by any means. So let's uh, first explore the setup that we have. Um, we have a deployment file here. And the deployment file just, you know, deploys a single container, a single pod with Nginx inside it, just like to have something to display on a website. And, it, you know, it publishes some secrets and so on. It's not our concern really right now. And uh, we have a service. The service is a cluster IP service that is actually being published by our basic ingress right here and the basic ingress is you know there is a tls certificate that's being published on it as well uh, and i put the tls certificate here because i want to show you that actually the certificate is going to be created for us on application gateway so even that is going to be taken care of by the application gateway ingress controller so let's go ahead and um, check uh, the website i have a website published here of course, this is a, um, a fake certificate that I created, so I actually put a, a value in the hosts file right here so that it resolves, and the website is live. So this is good, but this, as, as we talked before, this is not uh, protected by any means. There is no firewall in front of it, um, and the, the TLS encryption and decryption is being done by the uh, ingress controller that's on the cluster, so that's something that we want to offload to a different service. So I have a little script here created, you know, that we're going to discuss what we're going to do. The first thing is just we're going to delete the, you know, basic ingress uh, that we have. So I'm just going to uh, go to the proper folder here. And, uh, you know, run this. So j that just deletes the basic ingress that we deployed. And then we want to uh, uninstall the existing ingress controller that we have. You don't really need to do that. You can have multiple ingress controllers if you still have other services needing it. But um, I just want to show you the procedure of, you know, replacing the, the entire thing. So, you know, uh, I'll install it using Helm. So it's convenient for me. So I'll just uninstall the ingress controller using Helm as well. And then we're going to delete the uh, namespace where everything ingress lived. That's good. Now the following procedure creates the application gateway itself. So um, just to run through the commands, you know, that we're going to execute right now. Um, first, I'm going to create the resource group, and then I'm going to create a public IP that is going to be used by the application gateway. And then we're going to create the application gateway itself. The main parameter that you should look for here is, of course, you supply the public IP address that you did before. And um, you also supply the subnet that you want this application gateway to have an internal leg in. And this should be a subnet that is reachable by the um, AKS. So I actually deployed it in the same VNet as the AKS, but on a different subnet, which is called management. So just to describe what's going on, we have the AKS VNet right here. And if you click on the AP AKS VNet, you go to subnet. And you have the default subnet. This is where AKS exists. And this is the management uh, subnet. This is where I'm going to put a leg on, like the private leg for the application gateway is basically going to be here. So that it can it can talk to the other subnet freely because they're both in the same VNet. Um, and one thing is important here is if you want a WAF, like I could deploy a WAF. So if I switch this to WAF underscore V2, that just deploys a web application firewall component. I'm not gonna because it's more expensive. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it just to show you. So let's just run through the, the commands. Creating the resource group. Should take just a second. Now creating the public IP address. And now creating the application gateway. So this will take a few minutes. I'll cut the video now and then return back when it's done. Okay, good. So now that's done. I'll show you what has been created so far. Um, just the public IP address and the gateway. That's all we did. And the gateway is connected to the AKS VNet right here. 
So this command just you know shows you the details of the Azure Network Application Gateway, and um, it just extracts the ID out of it and inserts it in this variable right here. We run this enable add-ons command uh, on AKS, and that command does uh, two things. First, it installs the required uh, application ingress controller onto the AKS cluster, and as well as attach it to our application gate by supplying the application gateway ID right here. So we run that as well. That should take like a minute or two. So just a little bit of info about this command right here because we're now enabling the add-on after the cluster has been created but if we were creating a cluster from scratch you could actually just supply this parameter right here uh, like what is the add-on that you want to put and the add-on is ingress dash application gateway and then you can also supply some details uh, not the id in that case but supply application gateway name and the application gateway resource group and so on and that will actually go ahead and create the application gateway for you so you, you get to skip those steps uh, but I'm not creating a cluster from scratch right now. Um, I just want to enable the add-on uh, on an existing cluster. In the documentation, you will find the differentiation right here between, um, you know, greenfield and brownfield deployments. A greenfield deployments is if you're creating an AKS cluster from scratch and you just want to make sure you install the application gateway ingress controller along with it. And it also creates an application gateway for you on a, you know, on a, blank, on a blank slate infrastructure. Um, but if you already have the AKS cluster, then you just want to install the application gateway ingress controller and you want to attach it to an existing application gateway. So we're going with this configuration right here. Um, and I, I will share those you know, URLs um, that I'm, I'm looking at and those scripts and everything in the uh, description. Good, so now that is done, so now we can actually go and um, apply our ingress. So the ingress is typical, exactly the same as the previous ingress. Remember, I still have my deployments and services and everything. I just need to publish that ingress. Um, and uh, the ingress here, the only two differentiations is uh, we have those two annotations on it, rather than the, you know, the basic annotation right here for the Nginx ingress. So every type of ingress you're going to have, if it's an Nginx ingress controller, it's going to, you know, require you to do some annotations right here. But now since we're using a different type of ingress controller, we're going to supply completely different annotations. And the list of annotations you can find in the application gateway ingress controller documentation, you can do a lot of them really. But for me, I'll just, I'll just use what I have here. Good. and now the ingress has been created so now if we navigate back to um, our gateway if we actually click on the listeners we will find that the rules has already been created for us so we have an HTTPS rule right here you will find it that it has the proper certificate assigned the certificate came from our kubernetes cluster which by the way our kubernetes cluster is actually grabbing the certificate from key vault um, via the service provider class so if you are not familiar with this type of setup go watch the previous video this just shows you how to create you know secrets and uh, and certificates um, and grab into kubernetes like grab them into kubernetes right out of key vault um, so um, in this instance for example we've created an a, a secret called nginx cert of type kubernetes.io slash tls and it has two keys tls.key and tls.cert with the value coming from this object called sample app. And this object is actually coming out of a key vault secret right here. So something you should probably do in all your uh, deployments as well. So if you're unfamiliar with that, just go back to the previous video. And um, if we go to the backends for the gateway, we can see here the pool default Nginx service on port 80. And it's pointing to this IP address. So this IP address should be the IP address of the pod. So um, I can actually come here, you got to get pod, and let's copy this pod name. So we can see the IP address right here is the IP address of the pod. So the, um, like if we do kubectl get ingress, and this is the ingress so let's describe it because i want to show you how it works and you can see here 
the um, TLS configuration and you can see here is the host you know same host that we expect and the path and it's pointing to the nginx service backend which in turn points to my pod um, so just a, a very simple setup right here and we also have enabled the ssl redirect via the annotation so um, the ssl redirect is also going to work so now to test that grab the ingress ip address right here and just switch the ip address in this hosts file Good. And now let's talk to HTTP sampleapp.com and it has redirected me to HTTPS so that HTTPS redirection is being done and it's displaying the proper website. So now we have instead of going you know directly to the um, pod via the ingress controller we are now passing by the application gateway first. So now we're not just directly talking to you know the client is not directly talking to the ingress onto the you know service and the pod instead we are actually talking to the application gateway and the application gateway is making the proxying for us onto that pod and now the application gateway configuration i can do from yaml so i don't need to actually go and you know manually configure my application gateway or do anything manual uh, on the application gateway itself all the configuration of the application gateway can be done through the yaml so if i need to do any rewrite rules you know any changes in the rules anything like that it's all configurable via the yaml and now if you come here to the web application firewall component you can actually um, enable you know the firewall itself um, and put it in prevention mode and that will provide you with a web application firewall capabilities so if i actually save that that's going to provide web application firewall capabilities for this you know website that i have and now it protects me against sql injection and you know other type of malicious activities that clients can do for me um, and you can also if you apply uh, on the vnet itself so this is connected to this vnet you can come here and apply ddos protection and that will also apply ddos protection for you uh, on the same vnet therefore on the same website so you will also be protected from you know DDoS attacks. Um, so that's just a very a good way to publish your Kubernetes uh, services. Thank you very much and I hope you learned something.